To be honest, viewers, it would be pretty insane for me not to make a video about ChatGPT. Here on the channel, we cover all kinds of different AI topics, all focused on this new rapidly evolving industry. I mean, I would be a ludicrous person not to cover this. A little bit of context here, ChatGPT is a very, very advanced chatbot created by OpenAI. OpenAI is a AI research company that is behind products like DALL-E2 image generation, and GPT-3, the text model. One of the more strange things that I noticed about ChatGPT was how much it actually blew up and people are really talking about it. I mean, I actually met a person in real life who knew about ChatGPT. So yeah, it seems like this one at least is punctuating out of just that little AI industry sector into the public domain of knowledge. People are hearing about this thing. But enough rambling, let's dive in. Let's start at the source of this river. The direct original blog post by OpenAI on ChatGPT. When I first personally heard about this, it was in my Discord server, which you should join by the way. Everyone's like, hey Matt, you gotta check out this new AI by OpenAI, ChatGPT, it's pretty cool. And I'm sitting around thinking, well, I already know about GPT-3, which of course is what ChatGPT is based on, and GPT-3 just had an update. It can't be that interesting. Well, boy, was I proven wrong in my own head there. They've trained this model called ChatGPT-3, so it actually is a little bit different than GPT-3. I was wrong about that. It interacts in a conversational way, which differentiates it strongly from GPT-3 in this regard, although GPT-3 is still very capable of conversations. The dialogue format makes it possible for ChatGPT to answer follow-up questions, admit its mistakes, challenge incorrect premises, and reject inappropriate requests. So it's a sibling model to instruct GPT, which is a subset of GPT-3. You can kind of think about this all under the umbrella of GPT-3, it's the same tech, but if you use GPT-3 in the traditional sense through OpenAI, this is trained differently. The CEO of OpenAI did not expect ChatGPT to blow up like it did. It just passed over a million users in about a week, which is pretty crazy for an AI tool like this. You can try it for completely free, of course I'm going to link it down below. It's a research preview and then eventually it's going to cost money, but it's definitely going to be a lot cheaper than stuff like Dolly 2. They dive right into the deep end with these examples. Someone who codes can actually paste their code into ChatGPT. This code is not working like I expect. How do I fix it? It's difficult to say what's wrong with the code without more context. Can you provide more information about what the code is supposed to do and what isn't working as expected? Also, is this the entire code or just part of it? Immediately, we're already seeing a mind-blowing result from ChatGPT. Not only does it understand the context of what it's supposed to be doing right now, it's going to ask follow-up questions so it can more accurately answer the question. It's thinking into the future here, which is really crazy to think about. Definitely something that regular GPT-3 was already capable of. However, it doesn't typically do it on this level in a chat format. Now, this is some pretty deep thinking on the part of the AI. I heard someone recently describe this thing as a really, really smart friend that you can chat with about anything. So the user replies, it's just a part of the code, the error never surfaces, I think there's something wrong with the channel, this is obviously code speak, I'm not a coder so I really don't know what they're talking about with this. So ChatGPT doesn't necessarily just immediately solve the problem, but like a real person, it says it's difficult to say more without more information about what the code is supposed to do and what's happening when it's executed. But it does give us something here, which proves it's not just responding in a way, it's actually reading all of this code and really thinking about it. One potential issue with the code you provided is that result work error channel was never closed, which means that the code could potentially hang if the result work error channel is never written to. It's really crazy to think about this too because all of this coding knowledge here, this doesn't come from, you know, ChatGPT3 going and running the code in its head, so to speak. It has knowledge about the way code is supposed to work, so it looks at this in the same way that a human would look at it and pick and part in different pieces of it. It's so fascinating how this works and how similar to a human it is. ChatGPT really reminds me of another website called character.ai, which is a very similar concept, so to speak, but it can't read code and stuff like that as well. It has different capabilities. The next example we get from OpenAI here, how do you break into someone's house? That's a, that's a pretty direct question. Obviously, 
OpenAI has included this example in here to explain to us how the AI algorithm is going to attack questions that might involve illegal activity. It's not appropriate to discuss or encourage illegal activities, such as breaking into someone's house. Doing so is a crime and can result in severe legal consequences. Instead, I would encourage you to talk to a trusted adult or law enforcement if you have concerns about someone's safety or believe that a crime has been committed. It is never okay to break into someone's home without their permission. So you can see that the AI strongly will not tell you how to break into someone's house. It's not going to just give away that information necessarily. Although I will say I have seen people that are able to break through this barrier. Like I saw someone was able to make it create a list of ingredients to methamphetamine, but it did have a disclaimer saying this is for learning purposes only. So there you go. I mean, it, it kind of still saved its own ass. Following in this example, actually, I'm wondering how to protect my home from a burglary. Sorry, that wasn't the, the right question. And then it gives you some different steps and tips on to how to prevent your home from burglaries. Strong, durable locks and doors and windows. Keep doors and windows locked. Use a security system, surveillance cameras, well-lit property, both inside and outside. Don't leave valuable items in plain sight. Trim bushes and trees near windows and doors to reduce hiding spots for burglars. That's something I would not have thought about for sure. And this final seven one is, is very interesting as well. Consider joining a neighborhood watch program to help keep an eye out on your community. And it even has a disclaimer out here at the end. No home is completely burglar proof. These steps can help reduce the likelihood of a break in. It gives you a full, fat, detailed explanation. It's not just passing it off as like, here's something you can do real quick. It's really detailed and intricate. It writes a lot. This is something I noticed. The other GPT-3 models in the past were not doing stuff like this. They were not as detailed and as deep. This thing gets pretty deep. This one goes through an entire theorem. So this is advanced work right here. I'm not going to go through all of this stuff, but it is able to break down this theorem and not only break it down, write an entire limerick about the theorem and then summarize the entire conversation. Just absolutely ridiculous capabilities here. It's like having your own personal human. Alexa ain't got nothing on chat GPT, let me tell you. Hmm, I don't know that. Was I talking to you? Sorry, I thought I heard my name. And, you know, they also show some other capabilities. Help me write a short note to introduce myself to my neighbor. It's like your own personal little assistant. It can help you with stuff like this. This example in particular is meant to demonstrate its ability to continue the conversation. So it writes a note and then says, can you make it more formal? It takes the same exact skeleton of a short note and makes it more formal. So it's not creating a new note here. It recognized and read this old one that it generated and reformalized it. And it says, can you send it for me? And it understands that it's a text-based AI assistant and doesn't have this ability. Let's take a little dive in for ourselves, why don't we? Capabilities remembers what user said earlier in the conversations, allows users to provide follow-up corrections, trained to decline inappropriate requests. And then some limitations, occasionally generate incorrect information, produce harmful instructions or biased content, limited knowledge of the world and events after 2021. For our first example, we're going to leave no stone unturned. Write me a tutorial about how to bake cookies, but in the form of a rhyming rap, and make it so that there is a comedic twist at the end. The twist at the end, I think, is going to be the difficult part for it. We'll see if it can do it. And send. All right, it definitely wrote us something to observe here. First, you'll need some ingredients like flour, sugar, and butter too. Mix them together in a big bowl until they form a nice smooth dough. Next, you'll want to roll it out, use a cookie cutter or just a glass, and cut out some shapes, big or small, it's up to you, just have some fun with it. Now it's time to put them in the oven, set the temperature, and let them bake. Keep an eye on them, don't let them burn, or your cookies will be a big mistake. Some rhyming in there finally. When they're golden brown and smelling great, take them out and let them cool, then grab a glass of milk and enjoy your freshly baked cookies. So cool. Some more rhyming, finally, I guess. I mean, it's just repeated the same word, so it's more of like a poem type thing. But wait, there's a twist at the end. Just when you thought you knew it all, you forgot one important thing. To preheat the oven, that's the call. So don't be like me, a cookie rookie. <laughs> Remember to preheat. It's key. Then your cookies will come out just right, and you'll be the master baker. That's the reality. So it did actually include the twist. That was the easy part for it. The tough part was making it rhyme. And it's kind of a rap, I guess, but it doesn't really rhyme all the time. And... It's more of a poem, I would say, or like a limerick type of thing, not exactly a rap. But it did a pretty decent job, especially for the first generation. Again, your results might vary. 
I bet if we click this try again button enough times, it will produce results that rhyme perfectly. Let's ask it something else. How many jelly beans can fit into a basketball? It is difficult to say exactly how many jelly beans can fit inside a basketball as it would depend on the size of the jelly beans and the size of the basketball. Generally speaking, it is unlikely that a large number of jelly beans would be able to fit inside a basketball. The jelly beans would have to be small to fit them in. I think it's saying that because there's no hole inside of the basketball for the jelly beans to go through. Now my response to this is going to allow ChatGPT to take another stab at this one. So the jelly beans are jelly bellies. It should be able to find some information on jelly bellies. The basketball is the standard size for the NBA, simple enough. And the jelly beans are able to go inside of the basketball with my ray gun that allows me to apply the abilities of no clip to whatever I point and shoot it at. Some context on no clip, if you look it up, basically it's a term used in video games a lot and other 3D programs. It allows two objects to just sort of clip through each other and they won't collide with each other. It basically turns collisions off. And it freaking got me on this one, man. It freaking got me on this one. If the jelly beans are the standard size of jelly belly jelly beans and the basketball is the standard size for the NBA and you're using a ray gun that allows you to apply the abilities of no clip to whatever you point and shoot it at, you would be able to fit a very large number of jelly beans inside the basketball. And this is because the no clip ability allows you to move through solid objects. So you would be able to fit the jelly beans inside of the basketball without making them take up any physical space. You could fit an infinite number of jelly beans inside the basketball as long as you have enough to keep shooting them in with your ray gun. Wow, that is an answer I honestly was not expecting and this is why this thing is blowing up on the internet. It's able to dissect my argument here, dissect my points and break it in a way to allow infinite jelly beans to just go into the basketball. It's like, hey, actually, you didn't think about this. No clip would just let me put an infinite number of jelly beans inside there. Very, very smart, detailed, intricate thinking going on by this AI. Very, very impressive. What do you think Benjamin Franklin would do if he had a no clip ray gun? So, of course, it always gives the, it's difficult to say, we don't really know. Given his curiosity and interest in science and technology, it is likely that he would be fascinated by the no-clip ray gun and would spend a considerable amount of time experimenting with it and learning about its capabilities. He may also use it to explore places that would otherwise be inaccessible and to better understand the world around him. I guess that's a pretty fair response. Write me a description for a YouTube video about reviewing the best toilets in the world. Are you tired of mediocre toilets that don't meet your standards? Look no further, in this video we review the top 5 best toilets in the world. From high-tech bidets to sleek modern designs, these toilets are sure to impress. We will take you on a tour of each toilet, highlighting their unique features and showing you why they're the best of the best. Plus, we'll give you our expert opinion on which one is truly the ultimate throne. Don't miss out on our in-depth review of the world's best toilets. Yeah, it's it's definitely good at some creative writing while also keeping it professional for sure. Explain to me how I could decorate my toilet for the holiday season. They're telling me I could try a few different things. One option would be to add some holiday themed toilet seat covers or toilet tank covers, which can add a festive touch to your bathroom. Holiday themed hand towels or holiday themed shower curtain to the room. Place a small Christmas tree or some holiday themed decorations on the counter or near the toilet. You could even hang some holiday themed artwork or posters on the walls. Holiday themed air fresheners, scented candles to make the room smell festive. These are just a few ideas to help you start decorating your toilet for the holiday season. It's definitely a, a pretty apt and creative model for sure. But what I'm really interested in is what people like you viewers at home are doing with this model. Of course, since this model is free and it's free to join my Discord, I would greatly appreciate it if you guys showed me your best results with ChatGPT3 and your most interesting stuff and posted it right into my Discord. I have a whole subsection for ChatGPT generations at the moment on the Discord. Speaking of, let's see what people are talking about with ChatGPT on Twitter. I want to see what the best posts are. So this guy, Peter Wang here, had a 20 minute conversation with ChatGPT about history of modern physics. If he had this as a tutor, high school and college uh, would have been a little bit easier. So he's already saying that you could potentially use ChatGPT as a tutor. Definitely a lot of capabilities in education for this stuff. Invent the concept of education at scale. College as we know it will cease to exist, he says. That's a pretty bold claim, but I actually had something to say about this personally on my Twitter account, which you can follow again with the link in the description. 
I had a pretty similar thought on November 21st. Technology like GPT-3 will force school systems to restructure. I think that's definitely true. Let me know what you guys think about that in the comments below, by the way. Even Elon was getting into it. Chat GPT is scarily good. We are not far from dangerously strong AI. Elon doesn't know the half of it, though, because we're already at dangerously strong AI. It's just people haven't really used it for horrible things yet, but I'm sure it will happen in the future, unfortunately. So this 11-year-old actually had a really good idea for Chat GPT. It's so liquid and dynamic to interact with that you can simply tell it to become something. So it says, you are a text video game where you give me options A, B, C, D as my choices. The scene is Harry Potter. I start out with 100 health. And ChatGPT responds, let's get started. You're standing in the Great Hall of Hogwarts, surrounded by your fellow students. Professor Dumbledore is giving a speech to kick off the school year. Suddenly, you hear a loud bang and see a flash of green light. Member of the Death Eaters has entered the hall and is attacking the students. And it gives you options A, B, C, D. And you can pick the options and sort of run through a text-based adventure game with ChatGPT, even though it wasn't directly designed to do this. It's a very, very liquid program, and that gives it a ton of capabilities like this. So this is another great example here. A new way to learn, Wikipedia on the left, ChatGPT on the right. You can surf through material ridiculously fast now using GPT. He says it's actually like speedrunning the knowledge intake. So he's just blown away by ChatGPT's ability to summarize information very easily, ask specific questions about what he's learning from the Wikipedia article. Again, like having your own personal tutor. There are an absolute plethora of examples of people using this for code, like we talked about earlier. It can generate code as well. Write me a program to do this. Write me a program to do that. This example was fascinating as well. ChatGPT can just generate AI art prompts. This is something I already have done in previous videos, by the way, where I've used GPT-3 as a prompt generator for AI art. But apparently it's very, very good at this. This is no surprise to me. It gave him some different ways to go about decorating a living room and gave some visual descriptions, and they translated to really, really good AI art generations, as you guys can see. Fascinating, really creative works here. It shows that computers can now do creative stuff very, very effectively. Here's a very, very good example of some code-related stuff that people who don't know about coding would easily understand here. It's essentially able to take some code and create a visual image with it. So you can see how it understands the different pieces of what this is supposed to look like in the end. This example was fascinating as well. ChatGPT3 was able to rewrite Bohemian Rhapsody about the life of a post-doc and the output apparently was flawless. So it's able to take that song and completely rewrite it in a way that is very coherent. A complete parody of another song. Thank you so much everyone for watching this video. Make sure to check out ChatGPT and send me your results. I would love to take a look at a lot of them. Check out the Discord server and join the community. Lots of fascinating stuff happens on there. If you want to hear about ChatGPT and stuff like that, when it first announces, you want to be on my Discord server. Check out some of the other videos and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.